I have a farm which knowingly or unknowingly it has managed through chemical farming. But on a fine day, on a very good day, I wanted to move from chemical farming to organic farming. What all the research, what our people today, they are doing it and telling it is nothing but research. Anjagavi has one litre, you can use it in thousand litres of water also. For, for areca, coconut and all, as I found out, it is two hours of watering once a week. More than enough. That is more than sufficient. The weedicides will create more uh, metallic components. It is hard to break, the heavy metals get formed. Water has to be controlled in case of organic manure. Because organic manure itself has got a capacity to hold it back. Welcome to Vivara Info English channel, YouTube channel. I am HR Manjunath. Today we are at Gauri Shankara estate, which is a village called Harihalli, K. Vasukote Hobali, Alur Talok, Hasan district, Karnataka. This Gauri Shankara estate belongs to Dr. Vijay Prakash Hegde, and we are here today to understand from Dr. Hegde, sir, in terms of the benefit of organic farming and the challenges which we are facing on chemical farming and we need to move from chemical farming to organic farming. What are the things we need to be prepared? What are the things we need to be aware of? So, in the earlier episode, Dr. V.P. Agdesar has guided us in terms of importance of the organic manure, its preparation and its application. He also touched upon the importance of microbes, the microbial behavior and the relationship between the, the root zone of the plant and the microbial family. So, all the things we have discussed, I hope those points are very clear to you. Now, let us get into action. Now, I have a farm which knowingly or unknowingly it has managed through chemical farming. But on a fine day, on a very good day, I wanted to move from chemical farming to organic farming. So, what are the precautions we need to take and how we prepare ourselves to manage our farm, to manage our crops non-chemical, without chemical inputs. Let us understand some of the simple steps which we need to follow along with preparing a fully digested manure and the plant based extract which we have discussed in the previous episode for protection and as a tonic. We also have to do some other precautions. Let us understand from Dr. V.P. Agde sir the transition from chemical farming to organic farming. Agde sir, so we are into chemical farming for whatever be the reason and one fine day we decided to make a U-turn. We wanted to come back to chemical free farming which is organic farming. Now because we used extensively our chemical inputs over the years, our soil character sort of changed. As you rightly said the pH value will change, most of the uh, chemical fertilizer we applied will go into a mineral mineralization, unwanted I mean lot of minerals are there, deposits will be there, but there is no microbes to break, break it down. So, in this case, when we take a U-turn from chemical farming to organic farming, what are the precautions we need to take or how we start and how do we move on to the guidance we given us in the previous episode. So, the transition from chemical farming to organic farming, please sir. Transition is very simple because as far as it comes under the organic uh, uh, portion of it, only few microorganisms which can digest these metallic form of these chemicals residues residues into into neutral 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 it this one is your buttermilk the better than buttermilk is the panchagavya panchagavya is one liter you can use it in thousand liters of water also for a, this one because these two have got a capacity to absorb the microorganisms in the air also it absorbs into it and allows it to settle down in the soil. So, non, only other thing which, are, which I would like to mention here, I do not want to expose it in a bigger way, is the soil under the ficus religiosa, mm. that is Ashwatthamara. Okay. That is the one which has got all these ca ca characters. So, I do not want that, uh, that soil has to be there. <laughs> there is one bucket full of uh, soil under that. It is enough for one acre uh, transactions. So, but same same thing. Five liters of butter, buttermilk uh, diluted into fifty liters of water, spread it into the area. That will simply will do it. Need not go for such a such a uh, vicus religiosa. And uh, the second thing, panchagavya. Panchagavya is supposed to be one of the best medicine in the world. No chemical drugs can uh, cover the, this one. 
So micro, you need not go for search of particular micro, micronutrient or particular microorganisms. Everything will come with the lab. That's why I so show, showed you that, that pyramid. My, more the microorganisms, then the, the pyramid comes less the number of plants, less number of uh, vegetarians, less number of uh, uh, non-veg people. So this is all the, the law of nature. Correct. And in this city, in this, for example, I, all, I, I don't know whether I mentioned about the cosmic ray. God has given the power in the cosmic ray Correct. to absorb all, for three. Everybody can, everybody needs it, but they can transfer it some, to somebody. But whereas the God's given gift is one is the green leaves, or it is a dried way or something like that, it can be converted into microorganisms. Manure it can be done. The second is the copper wire which can harvest so, um, uh, cosmic ray and make a manure under the tree. It is not, oh, nobody can make that, that sort of any manure. The third is our uh, uh, desi cows uh, they, because it, it is, roams around the sun in the morning, absorbs all the cosmic ray and it uses in the milk, uses in the dung, uses, uses in the uh, Cow urine. Uh, cow urine. So these are the things that the law of nature is so much, so many things which is this thing. That's why I am tell, telling you. What all the research, what our people today, they are doing it and telling, it is nothing but research. Correct. It is then, we have been done earlier. Everything is there. And only thing is we have to learn it, have to study it and find out what is the way to come out of the problems. So friends, so what Sir is suggesting, when we take a U-turn from chemical farming to organic farming, so first thing we should look at, you know, the, the previous residues, the chemical fertilizer residues, which lies in the metallic form, that has to be broken down, for which we need microbes. Where do we get these microbes from? No need to run to a shop and buy a microbe in a bottle. So the nature has got a solution. So what Sir suggests is that you use buttermilk or panchagovia. So if you use about 5 litres of buttermilk, uh, which will become uh, 100 litres and you can spray, uh, spread across, spray it onto your soil or 1 litre of uh, panchagovia and then dilute it and spray it. The buttermilk and panchagovia also has got a special character to absorb the microbes, beneficiary microbes, necessary microbes from the atmosphere. So this happens naturally. So hence, if you want to make a U-turn from chemical farming to organic farming, Use these two, the buttermilk and the panchagovia, such that your issues on the soil, the metallic part get fixed. Once that is done, you come back to the neutral level. Then you start applying your fully digested manure. Then you do uh, control with uh, herbs, herbicide, whatever, kashayam you prepare, etc. So the beginning is very simple. So use this and then convert yourself into this. Sir, this microbes plays a very important role and uh, also when we do chemical farming, we have been told to use a lot of water because our soil become very dry and the frequency of irrigation and the duration of watering is also increased, is increased in chemical farming. So when now we switch over from chemical farming to organic farming, how the moisture management, how the irrigation method we have to use. So otherwise we are habitual, habituated to use a lot of water for a longer time. So how it impacts the organic farming performance. So, difference in irrigation when you turn from chemical to organic farming. For example, in case of chemical farming, it needs more water for plants to absorb. That is, it is actually the nutrients are siphoned. It is not like the, the cooked food. <laughs> it is simply siphoned. So, there, there it to digest the chemicals and to siphon it, it needs more, more watering. So, for example, in case of uh, organic, uh, this one, because microbes are also in need of water, they are holding the water, they allow the water, what is, and more, more the water you give in organic farming, it washes down, Correct. it doesn't stay there. Whatever it is, it has got a capacity. For example, a glass has a cap capacity to hold the water that much. You pour more water, what happens, it pours water. When it flows down, it takes most of nutrients also below the level. Uh, feeding root, roots, root zone. Feeding, uh, root zone, feeding roots. So that is taken once again by the weeds. It comes back into the, this one. So God has given a power of uh, 
I mean, green leaves to, uh, to transfer it into menus and uh, which will be it and this. So, water has to be controlled in case of organic manure. Because organic manure itself has got a capacity to hold it back. Correct. Required quantity to hold it back. So, what we have should is, for example, what I mean in the case of Araka, I had seen. 6 o'clock in the night, current comes in. So, they will start their motor. It runs up to 12, 6 in the morning. They keep on watering, 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 watering. Whatever the menu they have given, it is washed out. Correct. So, that is not necessary. For example, maximum for areca, coconut and all as I found out, it is two hours of watering mm -hmm. once a week. More than enough. That is more than sufficient. And these weeds which have got cut by brush cutters, the root it becomes a mat-like thing. And it will not allow more water to percolate into the soil. Okay. It washes, uh, flows, uh, flows out. So this is what needed, and we are unnecessarily making it to feed more, thinking that the soil will be dry. Soil will not be dried in that case. Just take two inches of soil, and ch check the uh, moisture. moisture level. This one uh, percentage. It is definitely always moisture is there. That the plant doesn't. If it goes below 7% and only the plants start suffering. So, this is maintained by this method of cultivation. So, we need not go for a bigger this one. And you will be saving so much of money, money also in that one. Friends, <coughs> so another important uh, criteria which we should look at it when we make a U-turn from chemical farming to organic farming. <laughs> So, in the, in the chemical farming, because we do monocropping, tilling and then excess use of fertilizer, it also requires too much of moisturization or watering. Our irrigation system is set up in such a way in chemical farming to pour more, more volume of water to the plant's root zone. As Dr. Agdeser said, the chemical farming inputs gets absorbed by the plants only through a principle of siphon. So, that requires more water movement in, in the root zone. Hence, we need more water. But when we take a U-turn from chemical farming to organic farming, the biggest difference here is already the basis of the plant will be filled with organic matter that is the compost which we have applied and the microbial systems. The presence of microbes, the organic carbon, uh, organic manure what we gave will hold sufficient moisture on the root zone. Hence, your frequency of irrigation and the duration of uh, watering can be drastically reduced in organic farming as compared to chemical farming. Even the nutrition supply to the plants happens through the microbes, not through water siphoning. So, because of these two differentiations, so an organic farming practices consumes or demands very less water with an extended frequency compared to chemical farming. As a result, we save the energy to pump the water and also the precious resources, the water itself. So, hence, as the transition from chemical farming to organic farming happens, we have to redefine, re-modify our irrigation methods and processes. So, very important thing and it, there is lot of benefit even for the nature and to the energy consumption. Sir, this uh, weedicide is one of the biggest challenge for us and in the chemical farming, we left right use weedicides. So, now if a farmer decides to make a U-turn from chemical farming to organic farming, Obviously, you would have used weed, weedicides uh, in the previous cycle. So, what is the weedicides effect uh, uh, in the transition to organic farming and what precautions a farmer should take here onwards? So, in case of weedicide, the metallic portion of the uh, nutrients is very, very high. It, it will not go out with one, one spray of buttermilk or uh, uh, panchagavya. It takes some more because they have used so much of the chemical in the metallic chemical into that one. It, if it is un, unattended, it may be there in the soil for nearly 40, 50 years in the soil. So, what we have to do in this case is probably it may have to, we have to repeat these mistakes, I mean uh, applications of buttermilk and uh, panchagavya. Uh, panchagavya once in uh, once, uh, once a month, once in six months, like that you have to do that or this one. It is very, very difficult to this one. But same time, all these methods of uh, weed controls, we have to follow it. It will autom automatically go to the. For example, in my uh, plant, I went, I went around to billion parts per million. Uh -huh. Not parts per million, parts per billion. So, about 30, 40 years of this thing also, 0.2% of 
heavy metals heavy metals are, were found. They are in a deeper soil okay so but that way we should not we should see that that doesn't affect our plant because you have to repeat it once in a way your buttermilk or panchagavya and this one we can get rid of there is no question there is no problem which is cannot be solved, solved. it can be solved but once it goes out the plants will be very happy nothing to worry very healthy thing to worry about thank you sir so uh, friends what we understand is in the chemical farming practices we use weedicides the weedicides will create more uh, metallic components it's hard to break the heavy metals gets formed and a regular spray of buttermilk or a panchagavya may not be able to you know, neutralize this effect so dr agresser suggests us to use multiple times the buttermilk and panchagavya such that we overcome the negative effect of extensive use of weedicide in our previous inning that is in our chemical farming innings friends a positive note sir is suggesting us that you have to make transition from chemical farming to organic farming and you should make and it is not a challenge for us you can happily move from chemical farming to organic farming take these precautions and it's a matter of time not even 3 years as the people says you can successfully make transition to organic farming by focusing on these things so with this uh, we conclude this episode with dr vp agde sir i think many of you friends will be looking at answers in terms of this transition only from chemical to organic and sustainability in organic farming and all those things has been discussed today so i hope this information is more relevant to all of you as vivara info english channel is available for you please share your comments and feedbacks and you can ask questions to us directly the numbers will be given to you to contact us so stay connected and if you want to know more about the practices in organic farming the technical nuances the fine tuning parts of organic farming please feel free to ask us your questions we will come back to dr vp agde sir once again once again and take his guidance thank you for getting connected with us we look forward to see you again stay connected please subscribe to vivara info english youtube channel thank you very much